welcome back to my channel so this video was highly requested and I totally understand how lung compliance curves can be a pain in the neck uh, so not anymore because today I'm gonna take you through a question and show you exactly how to break down these and also how to understand the topic in general so let's get started so here's a typical way of how lung compliance curves would come on your test um, so this question says the combined compliance of the lung and chest wall of a healthy individual is measured and plotted as shown below. It is noted that the intrapleural pressure at the end of maximal inspiration is negative 8 centimeter water marked X. Which of the following is the best estimate of the intrapleural pressure at the point marked by the black dot? Now, right off the bat, as I look at this curve, it looks scary and everything, but I want to show you guys that you can actually do this whole thing without really understanding this curve at all, simply by the process of elimination. If you guys know that for a healthy person, the intrapleural pressure can never be positive, right off the bat, you should eliminate answer choices A, B, and C because intrapleural pressure is never positive, right? And now I'm left with D and E. Now, if you notice, the question actually gave away everything. He's saying the, at the end of maximal inspiration, the intrapleural pressure is negative eight. If this point X is the maximum possible inspiration that this person can reach, then, and intrapleural pressure at that point is negative 8, then intrapleural pressure can never go more negative than that because intrapleural pressure is the most negative at maximal inspiration. And so any other point should have a less negative intrapleural pressure. And so intrapleural pressure can never be more negative than negative 8. And so it can never be negative 10. And so the correct answer is negative 5. Now this is totally random and totally unscientific because you don't understand the curve which is why I'm going to teach you what lung compliance is all about. Now in order to understand what compliance is all about I want you to go back to physics and remember with me compliance is the change in volume per unit change in pressure. Now in order to understand this I want you to imagine a balloon uh, when you say this balloon is compliant, you mean it's so stretchable that it's so easy to blow up. What does it mean so easy to blow up? It means that with just a little force, its volume goes so big. It doesn't need a lot of blowing force from you. It doesn't need a lot of blowing pressure from you in order to reach a high volume, which means that the greater the change in volume per little change in pressure, the higher the compliance. And that is exactly the point of the lung compliance curves, meaning that if you plot the curve of pressure, recoil pressure against volume, that means that no matter how much I blow up the lung, no matter how much the volume goes up, the pressure is still low. That is what we mean by a highly compliant container. So the, the more compliant the lung is, the steeper the curve. With this background in mind, I want you to go back with me to the lung compliance curves. So this is the scary curve we just saw earlier, and I want you guys to take a look at this uh, zero point. This is the pressure, or this is a curve of volume against pressure. So this zero point is zero pressure. I want you to take a look at this straight vertical line. All right. Now anything on the right of this is positive pressure or collapsing pressure, and anything on the left is negative or expanding pressure. Now, naturally and inherently, the lungs tend to collapse the whole time, and so the whole lung curve, the lung compliance curve, the entire curve will be found on the right side, which is the positive one, because it always tends to collapse, while the chest wall inherently tends to expand. And so most of the chest wall compliance curve will be on the left which is the negative pressure. 
And so the lungs and chest wall are always in opposition. The lungs tend to collapse, the chest wall tends to expand, but there comes a point where they are in balance, where these forces exactly cancel out each other. What is this point? It is this point I'm highlighting right here, which is indeed the black dot that the question was highlighting. So at this black dot, the chest wall compliance force that expands exactly opposes the collapsing force of the lung. All right. Now, what is the importance of knowing that in the first place? So if this is your lung and you're taking a normal breath and you stopped here after normal breathing, this is um, normal resting expiration, the volume that remains in your lung after the end of normal expiration is called the functional residual capacity. All right. And so that was the point of the curve, actually. If you take a look here, this black dot represents the point at the end of normal tidal expiration. And so after you already uh, like exhaled out uh, the resting tidal volume, the volume that remains in your lungs after that is called functional residual capacity. And so that was the point of this curve. However, when questions do ask you, they're not going to go into much detail about that. Rather, they would want to, the examiner wants you to understand that it is because of the continuous opposing forces that the chest wall is always expanding and the lung is always collapsing. There is always this continuous opposition uh, that creates a negative intrapleural pressure. So whenever these questions would come, they will come the same way I showed you earlier in New World. They will ask you about the value of intrapleural pressure at that point. And so it's as simple as that. you got to know that this area, you can see here is the highest volume, so this must be maximal inspiration, right? And this is the point of end tidal expiration. So you got to know this point as well at this volume. And you got to know that this represents functional residual capacity. So the whole point about uh, asking questions on these curves is to understand uh, the value of negative intrapleural pressure and that it's created as a result of these opposing forces. So here is the curve about intrapleural pressure. You got to understand that the intrapleural pressure is the most negative at maximum inspiration. That was the negative 8 marked X that I showed you earlier. And the intrapleural pressure can never go beyond that, can never be more negative than that at maximal inspiration. And it all, will always return back to where it is at expiration, which was the negative 5 value I showed you earlier. But even if you don't know anything about that, you can still do it by the process of elimination as we've seen.